Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is smile. S-M-I-L-E. Really? You bet your life. The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! That's me, Groucho Marx. Let's not overdo it now. Well, here I am again with $2,500 for one of our couples tonight. All right, Fennerman, who's first to try for the $2,500? Well, we invited a number of newlyweds to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. and Mrs. Heinemann, and here they are. Oh. Folks, come over here and meet Groucho Marx. I see. A couple of, couple of newlyweds, eh? Yeah. Jolly, Jolly Heinemann, is, is, that, is that right? Hinman. Oh, Jolly. Hinman, yeah. Uh-huh. Hello, youngsters. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll win $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. You may not use it, but you always have it with you. <laughs> now, uh, jo- Jolly Henman. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, how newly wedded are you, uh, Jolly? One in three-fourths months. <laughs> mm-hmm. There are things are looking up here tonight. Are you standing in a box? <laughs> 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 I don't think so. <laughs> no, huh? You're pretty tall, aren't you? Yes, I guess I am. That's the understatement of the year. Huh? <laughs> How tall are you, Jolly? I'm six, uh, six foot one. Is that with or without shoes? Well, I don't know you that well. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and what is your name? Uh, Rance? Rouse. <laughs> oh, oh, Rouse. Huh? Both like like, like Rouse with him? Is that That's right. right. <laughs> How tall are you, Rouse? I'm six, five and a half without shoes. You're crazy about being without shoes, you two. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's obvious you're newlyweds. Your head is, heads are in the clouds. Uh, let's come down to earth and find out something about you two. What, what kind of work do you do? Well, I work for Jolly's father. Uh, I see. Now it comes out. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Nepotism in its most vicious form. Huh? <laughs> you work for uh, Jolly's father? Yes. Uh, what, what do you do? Uh... I work for Colby Poster Printing Company. That's his company, and I'm just learning the business there. He's giving you the business eventually? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Now, uh, were you working before you got married, Jolly? No, I was going to school. I went to Los Angeles City College. I see. Did you graduate from there? No, I only went one year and got married. You got married uh, mm-hmm. pretty early. Huh? Now, how'd you capture this fellow? Did you dig a deep pit and cover it with branches or something? <laughs> no, it's a pretty long story, but uh, he came out to the Tip Topper Club where we met. And what is the uh, Tip Topper Club? It's a club for tall people. A social organization, and um, you club each other? <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. Only after we're married. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> you know, she's doing better than I am. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, uh, he asked me to dance, and so I danced with him, and and uh, so I was walking away because I liked this other guy, and he kept smiling at you me. You liked another fellow? Uh, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, going to say smile. (laughs) 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 One year in high school, and already she's got a (laughs) hundred (laughs) dollars. Okay, now you were at this club and you were dancing with another chap. And I was dancing with Rouse, and uh, Rouse called me up the next day and asked me to go to a show and out to dinner. And so I went with him, hoping this other guy would call. <laughs> and then my mother would say... Women are so loyal. <laughs> <laughs> my mother would say, well, she, she's not in. And then maybe he'd get the idea to ask me to go steady. So I went Your with him. Your mother would take the votes on this lying <laughs> that you were doing? I guess so. And so uh, I went out with Ralph and had a very nice time. But this other guy still interests me more. So the next week, Ralph said he'd ask me... <laughs> Ross is a bit on the Schlemiel side. <laughs> and in the meantime, Ralph uh, came out to different parties, and uh, and one was a picnic, and uh, we were playing baseball, and he broke my little finger. <laughs> and the next week, though, he broke his toe and got even. <laughs> and then... Uh, 
Ross, you carry a blackjack as regular equipment? I think you know that. And so we seem to have something in common, but I was still going steady with this other guy. Well, what about your now. finger? Right? Well, it was okay <laughs> then. And your toe, was it all healed oh. up? Oh, no, no. I've had no. reinfections of it. He oh. had his toe now taken off after we were married. Oh. <laughs> well, that's pretty funny, huh? <laughs> something tragic about a man getting married with only nine toenails. <laughs> <laughs> Not that so necessary, but it's nice to have them, I think. <laughs> now, Ross, tell me about your club. Uh, could I join? Uh, no, you couldn't. Well, why not? <laughs> well, uh, we consider anybody under six feet a uh, shrimp. <laughs> That's as fishy an answer as I ever heard. <laughs> now, how big would I have to be to join your club? Well, anybody that wants to get into the club has to be six foot four inch tall. Any man would have to be that? Any guy? man, yes. How about your wife? She's not six feet four. Well, she's a woman. <laughs> That's true. It never occurred to me. <laughs> what, you're, what you're saying is that uh, women are different. Is, is that it? That's it. In a way. Well, live a little, learn a little. <laughs> well, you're a charming couple, and I know you'll be very happy together. May all your troubles be big ones. <laughs> now, in just a minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $2,500 question. Right now, I want you to pay close attention to Fenneman. This is the season of the year to talk about courtesy. And so I'd like to say courtesy is not just a once-in-a-while thing at your DeSoto Plymouth dealer's. The folks there make a practice of being courteous all year round. And they're not only proud of the way they conduct their business, but equally proud of the two superb cars they handle. The DeSoto is their pride and joy, as fine a car value as money can buy. It's an expertly engineered car with that famous drive-without-shifting DeSoto transmission. It's a safe car to operate because of its big and responsive brakes that stop you quickly, easily. It's a real roomy car, too, up front, in back, and in the trunk. And as for style, no car has lovelier lines and richer appointments than the lavishly styled DeSoto. And as for value, you'll be amazed how far your dollars go today when you buy a brand new DeSoto. Remember, too, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the American beauty, the car that likes to be compared. So look for those two great names linked together. DeSoto, Plymouth. Now, let, let's see if you two will get a chance at the $2,500. Fenneman, explain the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that $20 as they want on each of four questions. And the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $2,500 DeSoto Plymouth question at the end of the show. Is that clear? Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected familiar movie roles. Now here's your first question. How much of the money will you bet? Thirteen. Hmm. Thirteen. Yeah, I think. Thirteen. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Who played Andy Hardy in the series of that name? Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rooney is right. <laughs> how is Fenneman going to figure up how much money they got? <laughs> I have no idea either. Fenneman is accustomed to dealing in round numbers. I'm sorry. I got the first one, though. Now, how much have they got? $33. You're the Einstein of the West, Fenneman. <laughs> Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. Now, how much of the $33 will you bet on your second question? What do you think? Oh, to be six foot again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to be even five feet again. 23 <laughs> $23. $23. Okay. Who plays Hopalong Cassidy? Oh, uh, Bill Boyd. Bill Boyd is right. $56. That's a very good magazine, the Bill Boyd. I read it all the time. Huh? <laughs> now you have how much? $56. Here's your third, third question. How much of the 56 will you risk? 45 45 Who created the role of Lynn Belvedere in Sitting Pretty? Oh, Clifton Webb. Clifton yes. Webb is right. <laughs> They're really up there now. 
Now they have one hundred and one dollars. Now we do it like a regular quiz show. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. Now how much of the hundred and one dollars you're going to bet on this one? <laughs> how much? Seventy-five. How much you're going to bet on this one now? Seventy-five. Now this is your last chance. You've got a hundred and one dollars. How much you going to bet now? Seventy-five. Seventy-five. Yeah. Okay. Who created the role of Tugboat Annie? Oh, oh Marjorie Maine. No. One answer between you. No coaching, oh, please. Uh, you will have to throw out the question, and also the one who hollered. <laughs> Take a stab at it now. What? Nothing. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It, it's Marie Dressler. It's a tough oh. one. But, uh, yeah. How much have they got, Fenneman? And they wind up with $26. Well, that's not too bad, $26. That's $13 a piece. That's almost a dollar a foot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, and Happy New Year from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Well, Groucho, the secret word is still smile. Still smile. That's and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a fish dealer and a housewife to be on the program. And here they are. Mrs. Jean Gillen and Mr. Jack Berger. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life, kids. And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Now, let's see. Mrs. Uh, Jean uh, Gillen, huh? Yes, sir. You're the housewife, and Jack Berger, you're a, a fishmonger, is that right? That's right. Well, where are you from? Uh, I'm from New York City originally. You're from New York, and Mrs. Uh, Gillen? Uh, I'm from the smoky city of Pittsburgh. You're from the smoky city of Pittsburgh? Yes. Mrs. Gillen, you're living in the past. You're thinking of the Pittsburgh of 20 years ago. Oh, yeah? When they had winning ball clubs. <laughs> <laughs> where is your husband? Why did you come to California? Well, it was his idea. I see. My husband's I, I idea. presume he's back in Pittsburgh? Oh, no, he's out here now, too. <laughs> <laughs> what, is your, what does your husband do for a living? He's a, a marine engineer. A what? A marine engineer. A muddy engineer? A marine. <laughs> oh, a marine engineer. Yeah. Oh, a marine engineer, huh? You're Scotch, huh? I sure am. Oh, sure. Now I recognize the dialect. <laughs> uh, he's a marine engineer, and where does he operate? Well, he's not working at it now, but he used to go to sea for quite a number of years he was at sea. What did he go to sea? Do you remember? <laughs> yeah, just to see what he could see. <laughs> I suppose in Scotland that's considered a pretty hot joke, huh? <laughs> how, how did you meet him? Well, when I came to this country at first, we were quarantined. Ella, we couldn't get into Ellis Island. And we were to go and stay on, on Pier 54. We were all made to go and sleep there. We stayed there for a week. Mm -hmm. And there was a crew from another ship came over with a band for, to entertain us. And we were doing the quadrilles. But did you do the Highland Fling? No, I was doing the quadrilles. And, you know, one bar to the quadrilles, they swing you around. And the two big fellas swung me around. I slipped out of their arms and I fell into the drum. <laughs> So when he picked me up, this fella came over, he picked me up, you know. <laughs> so I didn't see him after that for four months, and I was at Coney Island with my sister one day, and we're in the, at Luna Park in the Wheel of Fortune, you know, that great big wheel that goes spinning round and round. Well, we went on that, and I sat on the wheel, and I got knocked off, and when I got knocked off, got knocked right into him. <laughs> Well, did you get married while this thing was spinning around? <laughs> no, no, we eloped up to Middletown, New York, and got married. Why, why did you elope? Oh, well, I was scared of my mother. <laughs> Are you still scared of her? No, <laughs> not now. Oh. I'm a big girl now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Has anything unusual ever happened to you? Uh... Well, nothing very much unusual, but I've got my own back. My husband one time took five dollars out of my pocketbook, uh -oh. and he got dressed up and went out. And when he came home that night, I went through his pockets and I found a, a um, program for the opera from New York. So the next morning when I made up his lunch, instead of putting any meat on his sandwich, I put the, op the program in between his <laughs> two slices of bread. Well, that's not a fish story, but it's a good meat story. <laughs> now, uh, what fish market do you work for, Mr. Uh, Berger? Jack's Fish and Poultry Market. Uh -huh. Now tell me, do, do <laughs> fish have any special value as food, for example? Are they, are they packed with vitamins? They are, and they are considered a brain food. Seems to me if a fish had any brains, he'd still be in the water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what specifically, uh, where, where do you get your fish? And don't say out of the specific either. Huh? 
Well, we get our fish from uh, many states. We get fish from Maine, from the state of Washington, from Massachusetts. Boston, Massachusetts? Oh, yes. A lot, a lot of fish, fish from, from Boston. Boston. A lot of fish from Boston. Do they swim there by themselves? <laughs> no, no. They're pretty tired, but how do they get here? <laughs> well, uh, fish from Boston, we fly. We bring them Oh, that's flying the fish. You didn't <laughs> Isn't it pretty expensive to fly your fish out here from Boston? Well, it's uh, pretty expensive, but it'd be more expensive to go to Boston than get it yourself. <laughs> well, there's a great deal in what you say. Not, not too much, but some. Uh, <laughs> little bit. Well, thanks to you, Jack. I know all there is to know about fish. Now, let's see if you can hook me for 2500 the soda Plymouth clams. You run your $20 into more than our other couples. Fenneman's offstage to remind our listeners... How much the place couple won? The newlyweds won $27. Here we go. Now, let's see how high I can bet you $20. You selected famous words. Now, here's your first question. How much will you bet? $15. that all right uh, with you? all right for me, yes. Yeah. All right. To what are these, the opening words? In the beginning? The opening words of the creation. In the beginning, the Lord made the heaven. Heaven Well, I think that's right. It's the first words of the Bible. Right? <laughs> $35. Stop shouting in my ear, Sam. <laughs> Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. Now, how much of your $35 will you risk on your second question? $25. All right. To what are these, the opening words? We, the people? The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. $60. All right, you got $60. Now, here's your third question. How much of the $60 are you going to go for? $50. All right, $50. To what are these, the opening words? Four score and seven years ago. Gettysburg Address. Gettysburg Address is correct. $110. And here's your last chance to beat the other couples. Now, how much of the 110 are you going to go for? $100. Yeah, okay. $100. All right, so what are these, the opening words? When in the course of human events... Talk it over. The Declaration, Declaration of Independence. Declaration of Independence. And they wind up with $210. Thanks and a Happy New Year from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. <laughs> the secret word is still a smile. Still smile. Still huh? smile. And okay. we invited some college football players to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Paul McMurtry. His partner is a judo expert, June Tegner. And here they are. Folks, I'd like you to meet Groucho Marx. Right up here, please. Well, welcome to your Bet Your Life. And if you say the secret word, I'll, uh, I'll split $100 between you. It's a common word, something you always have with you. June uh, Tegner, you're the judo expert? Yes. Well, what is judo? Uh, well, it's the art of self-defense. <laughs> well, thanks for the warning, eh? And Paul McMaitre, uh, you're the football player. That's right. Where, where, where are you from, Paul? I'm originally from Rio Hondo, Texas. How do you how do you spell that? R I O H O N D O. Not bad for a football player. <laughs> huh? Well, you're certainly a big hunk of man. Now, how much do you weigh on the hoof? About two thirty. How old are you, Paul? 31 years old. And where do you play football? USC. USC, and you're 31 years old? That's right. What, what position do you play on the USC football squad? I play right guard. Uh -huh. why, why do you play that? That's where the coach puts me. Uh, what do you want to be when you graduate from college, if you ever do? Uh... <laughs> I like to be a football coach. Well, how, how come you're in college at this age? Isn't, this, isn't that rather unusual to be there at the, that age? Well, you don't look dumb. <laughs> I spent eight years in the Navy. Oh, uh, you didn't say that. Huh? <laughs> You'll forgive me for those cheap insults before, won't you, Paul? Sure thing. You better, huh? <laughs> June, let's talk about judo, eh? Huh? What does judo mean in Japanese? Uh, well, judo is Japanese. In uh, English, it means soft way. The soft way? And, and what is the soft way? What can you do to a man with judo? Well, you can throw him or uh, break his arm or you, uh, <laughs> stun him or knock him out or 
kill him or anything you want to do. <laughs> and that's the soft way? <laughs> I won't ask you what's the hard way. Huh? <laughs> do, do you have a job, June? Oh, yes. I teach at the National Judo Association in Hollywood on the Sunset Strip. It's the oldest school in this country. It is, huh? Is it old enough for him to get in? <laughs> June, do you think a knowledge of judo would help our football hero here uh, out on the field? Well, it may not help him out on the field, but it would certainly help him off the field. <laughs> well, he'd have to have some kind of help off the field, I guess. <laughs> could you use her on your football team? You sure could. It would never work. I never saw a football game where both teams were chasing the same player. <laughs> Well, June, in your work as a judo instructor, has anything embarrassing ever happened to you? Uh, well, yes, a lot of things, but, um, uh, uh, well, there's one. One, one specific uh, that you could uh, tell us about? Well, I was in the show with my sister once. And, in the uh, show? What kind of a show? A movie, the oh. theater. And um, uh, there was a masher sitting alongside of me, <laughs> and he was put his arm around me. See? And... Um, so um, I used the nerve center where I push against his head. You know, I pushed him back, and, <laughs> and, and he's laying back over the seat. And and my sister and I were eating popcorn. He's making a lot of noise, and he's gasping. And people are saying, "Be quiet, be quiet down front." So I started stuffing popcorn down his mouth. <laughs> I was embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's very interesting. What was the name of the picture? Do you remember? <laughs> was it Great Expectation? <laughs> what, was it butter popcorn? And, and solid. <laughs> I think that's the best kind to strangle a man with. <laughs> well, it's been very interesting, you two here tonight. And June, any time you want to demonstrate any of your holds on me, just remember I'm all tied up. <laughs> Now then, now you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other two couples, and you'll get a chance at the $2,500 DeSoto Plymouth question. The fish dealer and the housewife are ahead with $210. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build you $20. Now, you're a college boy. You ought to be pretty good at this. You selected bowl games. Is that right? That's right. Okay. How much are you going to bet? Um, 14. 14. Are <laughs> you getting strange sums here tonight? Huh? This is all a plot against you, Fenneman. <laughs> sure it is. All right. You're going to bet $14. In what city is the Sugar Bowl game played? The Sugar Bowl game. New Orleans is right. New Orleans is right. $24. Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. Now, how much of the... Uh, Twenty-four dollars. You did a masterly job there. Huh? <laughs> How much have they got? Twenty-four dollars. That's all they've got? <laughs> I told you Fenneman couldn't count. Huh? <laughs> I've been watching him for years up here. Huh? <laughs> You're right. Thirty-four dollars. <laughs> Isn't it pitiful? There's a grown man with three children. He can't count up to thirty-four. Huh? All right. You're going to bet how much? Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. <laughs> Fenneman, they're after you tonight. You better start figuring now, huh? Twenty-nine. Yes. Where is the Cotton Bowl game played? Dallas. Texas. Dallas, Texas. <laughs> How about sixty-three? That's all right with me, huh? <laughs> Here's your third question. How much of the sixty-three are you going to go for? Thirty-nine. <laughs> all right. Where is the Shrine East-West game played? San Francisco. San Francisco. Oh, you got one hundred and two dollars. You got one hundred and two dollars, and it's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much would you bet? Eleven dollars. Eleven dollars. Eleven dollars. <laughs> well, that's a very thrifty play there. Huh? <laughs> now, what city plays host to the Orange Bowl game? Miami, Florida. Miami, Florida is right. He knows all the answers, but he's just teasing me on each one. And they wind up with $113. Splendid, Fenneman. You've done a magnificent job tonight, huh? <laughs> I was going on to say that that means the housewife and the fish dealer with $210 get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question. You know, there are more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers located throughout the country. This means that as you travel, on business or perhaps on a vacation, 
you can rest assured you're not too far from a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. A car dealer equipped to render the same kind of expert service you're used to getting from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer in your own hometown. A dealer with a supply of factory inspected and approved Mopar parts. A dealer who wants to serve you just as honestly and skillfully as the DeSoto Plymouth dealer where you live. Yes, it's a big organization. And it's bound together by a common desire to do good work at a fair price. So wherever you are or wherever you drive, come in where you see the familiar sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here's the housewife and the fish salesman all set for the DeSoto Plymouth big question, Groucho. Well, here's little Scotty again and the old fish man, huh? All right, now here we go for $2,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. So think carefully and please no help from the audience. Here it is. You, uh, you got your thinking caps on? Sure have. Aye, aye. Well, the most beautiful building in the world is located at Agra, India. A-G-R-A, India. What building am I talking about? <laughs> That's right, that's right. You win two thousand five hundred dollars. You had the right answer, so you win two thousand five hundred dollars. Now, what are you going to do with all that swag? Well, I have a daughter when she was a little girl that miraculously recovered from polio. And I feel winning this money, the first I've ever won in my life, and I'm going to donate $500 to the Infantile Paralysis Fund. Well, thank you. That's a wonderful way to spend the money. And what are you going to do with your swag? Oh, well, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I'm so flabbergasted. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's say you weren't flabbergasted. What are you going to do with the money? Well, I have a daughter just married to a GI and he's gone to school and I haven't seen her for a long while and there's lots of things I can do for them. They're well, just starting up. That's right. Well, let's see. You win $2,500 plus $210 in the quiz. You really cleaned up tonight. Congratulations and a happy new year from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. Thank you. <laughs> Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Mark Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, folks, tell them Groucho sent you. Just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Ease up when there's a freeze up. You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. <laughs> Thank you.